So as you can tell from the title, probably this video is about kind of creating inexpensive um, Halloween costumes at home. So um, either using what you have or just picking up a few pieces, trying to avoid purchasing a really cheap polyester uh, costume from like Target that's only going to last you one year. So either using items in your closet or maybe purchasing an item or two that you can reuse. So a while back I had purchased the ColourPop Tinkerbell collection, uh, which was kind of the inspiration for this look. Uh, so thinking about um, this collection, uh, I just wanted to show you kind of an interpretation of Tinkerbell that you could do really easily at home. Uh, so I'm just wearing this green v-neck um, t-shirt that I got from, I think it was J. Crew Factory, uh, and it is a bit on the long side so if you wanted to you could probably wear it with leggings or something and evoke uh, Tinkerbell that way. Uh, it's almost like Disney bounding where you're kind of reflecting pieces of a character without like going full on costume. So whether you're a parent and uh, you're going trick-or-treating with your kids or you're handing out candy or you just want to kind of have a little bit of fun and kind of get into the Halloween spirit without kind of going full out. Uh, I really like this style of dressing up for Halloween and uh, I have some other ideas kind of sprinkled throughout the video as we get into the makeup so uh, you'll see me apply the makeup I am wearing. Like most things that you try out for the first time not everything goes smoothly or according to plan necessarily uh, but it's just you know a way to have fun with makeup and Halloween. I even showed you kind of how I created this hairstyle which <laughs> Uh, as I think I say uh, during the video, I am not a hairstylist, I'm not even that great at hair, but uh, this is something I think most people could probably uh, achieve with, you know, some trial and error. So in honor of this video, I did want to share with you also that uh, I have this um, pumpkin cider from Lost Boy Cider, kind of, you know, going with the uh, Tinkerbell uh, theme here. And uh, this is a local cider in Alexandria, Virginia, where I live. So I feel like I kind of earned this after struggling a bit with, with the hair and makeup today. But anyway, I just wanted to share this kind of seasonal beverage with you. And, uh, and without further ado, uh, let's get into this Get Ready With Me. Giving myself very... Uh... That 70s show with this middle part and the straight hair. Uh, but to start with the hair, so it's kind of out of the face, uh, I have this Conair Bun Maker. I've had this for a while, so I don't know if they still sell this or not. Uh, but basically, what it is is just a normal rubber band and then some of these kind of wider bobby pins, if you can see that. And then one of these, one of these hair donuts. Uh, so obviously you could just do a normal bun, uh, but I like adding this extra bit of kind of volume because I think it just looks a little bit more, you know, animated fantasy, more like uh, the character that way. Uh, and I think I might have to tilt my head upside down here. So. <laughs> I am not a hairstylist and I wouldn't even say that I'm that good at hair. Um, so so I kind of feel like if I can do it, you can do it. Uh, if you want to check out another video where I kind of did a little hair demo, um, I tried to replicate or do a hairstyle that was inspired by uh, Bridgerton. And uh, you can see, I need to like hairspray this down because that always tends to do that. I did blow dry it straight so that it would just be a little bit smoother. I think it's still looking a bit poofy on the side. I think this would be a lot easier to do on someone else's head as well. My sister-in-law wanted to um, dress up my niece who is going to be three in January as Tinkerbell for Halloween but I think I think my niece uh, really wants to be Minnie Mouse so I think that is what they're going with for this year anyway 
Uh, my niece has really cute like blonde curly hair, but I think it's going to probably be a few years before <laughs> she can make this kind of bun. And this is just kind of, you know, getting the base hairstyle. Uh, and then I'll kind of add some accessories and that sort of thing later on. So what you want to do with these is kind of spread it over. Now we're cousin it. <laughs> uh, so you kind of cover all of the donut shape. Okay, so once you've kind of draped that over the bun, you want to kind of wrap the hair around it. And that can be kind of as smooth or as messy as you like. Uh, and then you want to take your pins Okay, so I think that probably is as good as it's going to get. Obviously, you can use more pins and arrange it however you like. Uh, I'm going to use some hairspray. So, So like I said, I'm not a hairstylist, that's not perfect, but I think, you know, it's some approximation of what Tinkerbell's hair looks like. Alright, so I will zoom you guys in for the face. Uh, I recently got this thorn oil from Ritual Defee. Uh, Teresa's dad always talks about this and I think they were doing like a gift with purchase and so I've had this on my kind of to try list. Looks like it's separated a bit. Uh, but I thought this would probably be a very kind of Halloween appropriate product. Very strange that it's... If you have this product, let me know if it does that to you. I just purchased it so it should be, yeah, relatively fresh. All right, so this is red and I don't usually <laughs> apply products like that, but for the sake of having fun for Halloween, I think it smells vaguely like rose. So while I am doing kind of the rest of my, you know, normal base makeup and everything, uh, I thought I would start talking about some of the other like easy Halloween costumes I've done. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Corrector. So obviously today we are uh, kind of creating a Tinkerbell look, uh, but I did actually dress up as Peter Pan one year in college, which the way my mind works, this collection made me think of that costume. Uh, and what I did, I think, you know, if you're in like the medical field or any field that already wears scrubs, uh, you might be lucky uh, in that you already have one of the components of the costume. Uh, so what I did was I bought a like dark green scrub top. 
Uh, and I wish I had pictures. I looked on like my Facebook uh, and that sort of thing, but I wasn't able to find any pictures. I can remember a picture that was taken of that night, but I couldn't actually find the picture. Uh, so I'm using the Cogendo Aqua Foundation. Uh, it's a very nice kind of lightweight foundation. And this is in the shade 12, which I think is a pretty good match for me. I had tried the Moisture Foundation a while back, uh, and that was before they, I think, reformulated it. I wasn't able to get a good shade match with the product or the shade I selected anyway. Uh, if you are curious about uh, the Cogendo foundations and you want to try them before you kind of shell out because full price they are quite expensive. I think this is like a $70 foundation. Uh, so Camera Ready Cosmetics will sell little samples so you can try out a shade before you kind of commit to uh, the full size. So yeah, so I wore a, a green scrub top that was oversized and I think at the time I wore tights and some like black cotton athletic shorts. Uh, and then I belted the the scrub top uh, and then I just wore some like mules or whatever some like brown leather mules I think if I were doing that same costume idea today I would probably just wear leggings which I think are probably you know closer to what Peter Pan actually wore the leggings weren't quite as popular I think in like 2000 five, six, somewhere in there. Uh, it was probably 2005. So that's pretty simple. If you need to, you can get a scrub top from Amazon. Um, if that's like the one piece, you can just wear um, some little booties. I like costumes where if I do have to order anything, it's something that I could conceivably reuse or uh, donate or you know just something that has a little bit more kind of life to it than those really cheap costumes that you can buy you know in the Halloween section. Um, you could probably check out thrift stores if you have a little bit more time and uh, you know ask around if you have any um, friends or family that work in kind of a field where they wear scrubs they might already have that kind of top uh, so you wouldn't even have to buy it. And don't get me wrong I have <laughs> I have bought costumes um, from the Halloween section before. I think I was Little Red Riding Hood one year as an adult. One year I uh, dressed up as Indiana Jones. I don't know why I was going through a phase of like kind of dressing up as a male character, but I actually got like the Indiana Jones hat, like so, which is now hanging up as like a decor piece. And then I think I just wore like some kind of like cotton utility type shirt from like Dick's Sporting Goods or one of the other big ones. Um, so yeah, so I wore that in, I think maybe some like khakis or something. Uh, and then one year, probably in like 2011 or 12, uh, I dressed up as like a hipster Dorothy. Uh, so I do have a picture of that. Uh, so basically I had like a blue gingham shirt and I got some uh, red sequin toms. So I had like the ruby slippers and then I had a blue and white checked shirt uh, and then I put my hair in pigtails and you know did some makeup probably more than um, it would look like Dorothy was wearing in the movie or anything. And I even thought about wearing some like big chunky glasses but I don't think I ended up wearing those. Uh, so yeah so um, you may have a gingham shirt I think I got that one from J. Crew. Or you may even see if, you know, a friend or um, a boyfriend, husband, whatever, already has a blue gingham shirt. That might be a little bit more common for a guy to wear. You may be able to just borrow their shirt for the night. Uh, and if you have red shoes, great. I wouldn't be surprised if they sell those kind of like, like covers that you put on shoes to kind of, you know, make them look like a certain thing. Uh, so you can do that and then, you know, do the braids. Obviously I'm blonde. I didn't worry about having like brunette hair or anything. I think one of the things I like about Halloween is just the dressing up part. Uh, and you know, if you're into makeup, you like that kind of uh, transformative ability 
um, that it has. And so Halloween is kind of that extra excuse to kind of, you know, break out all your kind of more unusual makeup products, all your glitters and bright colors, or, you know, if you want to do something really vampy, you can do that too. And obviously, even though I am using the Tinkerbell collection, you can uh, use whatever makeup products you already have that you want to use. So I have the eyeshadow palette, the Super Shock Trio, like so, the three blush colors, uh, and then I have the two lip stains and two pencils. Uh, and I also grabbed the Another Glorious Morning Glitterly Obsessed from the Hocus Pocus collection last year. Uh, so I bought this partly because it had um, Binks. That's the cat's name, right? So I thought I could use that, like I said, time to break out all the the glittery fun shades. Uh, and then I also had this African Botanics Shimmering Gold Oil. Just going to back out a bit. Uh, that I forgot to use earlier. This was something I got in a FabFitFun. So I think I'm just going to see how this goes. It doesn't have like a strong amount of shimmer. It smells nice though. Uh, so that's maybe a little bit more subtle than I would want for Halloween. I might go in with something a little bit more luminizing. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the palette. And I think I want to incorporate some green but I don't know if I'm going to do kind of an all green look. I think I'll start off by setting my primer. I'm going in to the second star shade with a Sonia G Jumbo Blender. I went in with the Big Magic shade to kind of deepen up the crease and now I'm going into Awake. I think I wanna go in with more depth on the lower lash lines, I'm gonna go back into Neverland. So basically I used second star all over the crease and then deepened with Big Magic and then Awake. Uh, and then I tapped on Neverland in the outer third and Small Fairy on the inner third. So I guess I used these kind of five shades here, this kind of L shape. That gold shade did give me some fallout. It's a pretty look though. It looks a little kind of muddy in the crease, but I think when we apply everything else, maybe and put lashes on, it'll look a little bit more kind of pulled together. Okay, so I think that is it for the palette. Let's take a look at these. So I don't know if any of these are actually going to kind of work with the look I've created. Maybe on the inner corner. Okay, I'm actually gonna go in with Fly to Your Heart, which is light pink, and just kind of tap that on the inner corner. This would also be a good collection to break out. Huh. Oh boy. Um, this would also be a good collection to not smear on your face. So you have a giant green thing. Um, to break out around St. Patrick's Day. Well, like I said, we're we're kind of trying to make my face all kind of glittery, so I guess having a little extra sparkle is not gonna hurt. I think I need to turn up the lights here because the, the sun came out. It's a little bit better. Okay, so I think I'm going to use this color of the Super Shock Cheek. This is Magic Moon. All right, I'm just gonna take my normal rougher brush. This is the number five, and see how see how this does. I don't use this formula all that often. Pretty color. All right, and I'm kind of bouncing around all over the place. I'm um, going back for the eyeliner. There's two shades. Okay, so I have one green one, which I think I might end up using. And this other one, uh, it's more of a 
brown. I think I might want to lean into the green a little bit. That's a much more kind of wearable, bronzy metallic kind of shade. And uh, I thought I might go ahead and swatch this next to the Pine For Me um, eyeliner uh, from the MAC Tempting Fate collection. So hopefully you can see the MAC one is a much more kind of blue-green, it's darker, and then the color pop is uh, lighter, it's metallic, uh, so a little bit different there. Uh, I did film a full face with that MAC collection if you are interested in checking it out. Um, so going back to kind of the overarching theme of this video, one costume that I never did personally, but I always thought was a really clever idea. I think it may have been, I think Kirsten Dunst might have uh, mentioned this in a magazine interview once upon a time where she said that she dressed up as a Freudian slip, which I thought was pretty clever. Uh, so she, I think, just wore like a slip, uh, which again, you can probably borrow from your mom or uh, find one at, I don't know, Goodwill or something. Uh, but she, I think just took one of those and maybe wrote or pinned the name Freud on it. So I thought that was pretty clever. You could probably double up a couple slips or like wear raw and stuff underneath if you're worried about like modesty, you know, or just like some spanks kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to put this in my waterline, so stay tuned. So I have to say, I'm not super impressed with these ColourPop pencils. I think these are the kind that you sharpen even though they're plastic, which just always seems wrong to me for some reason. Okay, so after I sharpened it, I am able to kind of build it up a little bit. I think if you're going to buy one green liner though, I would recommend buying the MAC one. So I was planning to do lashes, but I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of liking just this more, I don't know, subtle look. Uh, I just used the Bite Upswing Mascara and the Clinique Bottom Lash. I guess it depends um, where you want to go in terms of how crazy your look is. Uh, okay, so let's try out some of this Glitterly Obsessed. Very interesting texture. It's kind of like spongy or something. <laughs> okay, so we are we are going full on glitter now. need a bit of glitter if you're a fairy, right? Just put some on over the brow. All right, now I might need some lashes. Speaking of um, Tinkerbell and lashes, do you all remember that um, House of Lashes had that Tinkerbell collection a while ago? Kind of wish I had one of those still floating around. I think that came out in like 2012 or something. Uh, I remember they had a lash glue that I used for a while. Okay, so these are the Ardell 152s. Seem like they'd be appropriate for someone who has wings. Uh, let's see, do we want to trim these? I also painted my nails gold. I don't know if you saw that. And I used this star glitter polish on my two ring fingers. I put two stars on each one. The actual polish um, was a julep shade that I don't think you can get anymore, but the um, the stars are the Nails Ink Luster Quart. I don't know if they make this anymore either. Uh, but I think you could just use a normal glitter polish and then just kind of place a couple loose stars um, on the polish while it's wet. I think that might actually be your best bet because a lot of times with those polishes that have those kind of big chunky pieces of glitter in them, it's hard to get those on the actual brush and then have them kind of be evenly distributed. So um, I actually took like, uh, what are they called? Like an orange stick, like those wooden nail sticks to kind of place them. That generally works a little bit better. So I just trim these a tiny bit. I just like cut off the last like knot worth of lashes. Uh, and typically when you trim them, you wanna go from the outer edge. So the longer lashes it tends to look a little bit more natural that way, even though it's not, you know, a very natural style of lash. And using a black liner probably would have helped things kind of blend a little bit better as well. All right, so I'm going to take a black liquid liner on the kind of like inner 
corner of my eye just to help the lashes kind of blend in a little bit more. I feel a little bit like I'm giving myself like black swan eyes or whatever. I have um, like this eye for whatever reason, I have that kind of fold of skin that comes down like over the tear duct. And this eye is just shaped a little bit differently. So I don't know if you can see like, that looks kind of weird when my eyes are looking down. It's like the problem most people have when they have hooded eyes and they try to do winged liner, but it's on the inner corner. So I thought I might also take another look at um, these guys that I used in the kind of Walmart beauty box. So I already used these once, but I think I'm gonna try just putting a little bit of lash glue I like it or not. It's a little bit distracting there. And now, of course, I have glue on my face. Okay, so let's just throw one of these lips on and then we'll finish up with the hair. Um, so we have two shades. There's Clap, if you believe, and this one, which is Tinkerbell. I think I'll actually go in with a darker shade. I feel like I need something a little bit darker. And these also have some shimmer in them. Feel nice and comfortable though. Kind of reminds me of when those like YSL glossy stains were all the rage. Probably could have used a lip liner, but that's okay. All right, so that's it for the finished look. You can definitely tell this is not an everyday look. All right, let's zoom you guys out. Okay, so to finish off the look, I wanted to show you some hair accessories that I got from uh, Kristen S at Target. Uh, so the first one here is the velvet bow slide. Um, so you can see it has this little metal piece that you can kind of hook into a hairband. Um, so I don't know, putting it on the front might be a little much. Um, I think this would probably be prettiest kind of at the back of the hair. Uh, so I got a few different options here, and again, this is one of those things where I'm kind of buying it for a costume, but it's something that, you know, you can reuse for Christmas or what have you. Um, so this one is the Scrunchie and Scarf Duo, and this is a darker, like, satin type material. Um, so like it suggests, it is a scrunchie attached to a bow. I'm thinking this one might be the best. Uh, and then finally, I just got some of these. This is a set of five satin skinnies. So I thought I could possibly just, I don't know, put it around it or whatever. But I think I think this one might be the winner. Um, so hopefully it won't mess up my hair. But uh, before I do that, I want to use this Eva NYC Seeing Stars Holographic Gold Spray. It says it's a reflective, glittery, cosmic shine for all hair shades, powered by plant protein and argan oil. So, let's kind of see. Okay, I can definitely see some. It smells good. So obviously I have lighter hair, so it may show up a little bit better on darker hair. You can see that there's there's glitter in there though. Okay, and then for this, let's see which way the kind of bow is going. Um, so I could have it so the bow is like that, or I could just probably need some iron is what it needs. So totally not necessary, but still, still kind of fun. Uh, okay. So I think that's it for what I wanted to play with and talk about in this video. Uh, I hope you guys found this helpful and gave you some ideas or um, just give you a fun kind of Halloween themed video to watch. 
Uh, I hope you guys are all staying very safe and healthy. And if you do go out this Halloween, I hope you have a safe and enjoyable night. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and I will talk to you soon. Bye.